Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we are not
disciples from far and near, count us also among those who boldly confess your Son, Jesus Christ, as Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
What do you think? Do you, are you happy when you get cards on your birthday or on a special occasion? <gasps> Yesterday was your birthday. Wow, let's all say happy birthday. Happy birthday. There you go. Yes, we are happy when we celebrate our times of joy. And guess what? When we are sad, we love to receive cards. So the card that you are going to make today is for, do you know who? Hunter. Hunter. Okay. Is Hunter my brother? Is Hunter my brother? Is Hunter your brother? No. But you know something? Hunter is everybody's brother. Is that possible? Is that possible? I'll tell you why it is possible because we all are children of one God. We all believe in Jesus and therefore Hunter is your brother, Hunter is my brother and Hunter is brother to everybody. So today when we make Remember that you are going to make somebody very happy. You are going to make someone feel less sad about what's going to happen. You know, worried about what's going to happen. He's going to have a surgery. But we will keep him in prayer. And when Jennifer takes you to make those cards, she will also share stories. A story that will make you realize how important it is to share one another's pain and sorrow, worries, sadness, everything. Right? So, shall we look to God in prayer? Loving Jesus, Loving Jesus. you are our rock. The foundation of our faith. The foundation of our faith. Help us to walk. Help us to walk. As your children. As your children. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Come into our hearts. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts and silence all those noises of worries and anxieties that surround us. Fill us with your spirit that will calm all our fears and let your word speak to us. Warm our hearts with your loving and living presence as we search the scriptures and reveal to us that Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah. We thank you for that gift of grace and salvation that you gave us through Jesus Christ. We pray that you will use us, O oh Lord, as instruments of your grace one more time, every time. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from the triune God be with us all. Amen. We have been reflecting on this theme of faith. Growing in faith. What does it mean? Now Jesus has a midterm examination for the students, the disciples. They have seen what he did, heard what he preached, saw what he did, bringing healing to communities, individuals, families, restoration of relationship, and they are in a place, in a site, called Caesarea Philippi, which was known for 
the presence of many idols, many gods, if you like. <laughs> and it is at that time and space Jesus puts this question. It is a question that demanded an answer whether they have been perceptive to what they have heard, what they have seen and understood. Listen to that question. Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Requires a very cerebral answer. What have you seen? What have you learned? What have you understood? They come up with an answer that shows that they have done some reflection, that they have heard what people said. Likening Jesus to a familiar figure. Maybe John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, or even one of the prophets, possibly Moses could have been there as a possible name. And those names would definitely figure in the list because as human beings, what we commonly consciously or unconsciously do is to compare a person, a situation with what we are familiar with, who we are familiar with. We repeat traditions, history, heritage, faith and we liken something to another, someone to another and we learn by what we call as experience. Jesus as one of the prophets, Jesus as the new and the second Moses was a familiar image, figure, that occurred to the community. Because after they witnessed what Jesus preached, taught, they would probably discuss this at home in the communities and say, did you see this? Did you see that? And in those discussions, definitely these names, key figures would have cropped up. Jesus says, well, good. You've done well, but, that word but is very important, but who do you say that I am? Now that question does not demand just a cerebral answer. It needs head knowledge and heart knowledge. It means the requirement of processing of head and heart knowledge together that produces faith. This is what people say. This is what they have seen and experienced. But what do I believe? Now that matters a lot. And that question is a question not only to the disciples, but it is a question each of us have to wake up with every day. Face it at the end of every day. But who do you say that I am? Who do you say Jesus is? <coughs> Simon Peter comes up with. At that point, Simon comes up with this answer. You are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Jesus is happy. Simon, son of Jonah. Simon bar Jonah. You have said it right. It is not just of your own will and power you were made able to make this confession. It was God, the Spirit, who revealed this truth to you. What is so important is in that 
confession, what we call as Caesarea Philippi confession. You are the Messiah, son of the living God, made in that space and time, is an everlasting confession. Remember that this confession of Peter comes just before, you know, what we are going to deal with, reflect upon next week. And that is Jesus declaring what that messiahship means. Jesus says, the messiah is going to be killed, he's going to be crucified, but then he will rise. And when Jesus predicts what is going to happen to him as the Messiah, Peter fails. First he gets an A plus for his confession. But when Jesus says he is going toward the cross and this is what is going to happen to him, Peter says, no, no Lord, this should never happen to you. Jesus, who had just called him, you know, you are Peter. On this rock I will build my church. Awards, rewards that Peter gets in terms of authority. Fails. Jesus says, get me behind Satan. You are a stumbling block. How easy it is for a rock to become a stumbling block when we forget what the messiahship of Jesus is. It is not to glorify somebody and to glory in one's authority, but to be a servant of all, ready to minister to all. And it is following that, once again, next week's gospel passage. If anyone wants to be my disciple, let them take, deny themselves, take up the cross and follow me. <coughs> in today's pericope, in today's reading, lectionary, we have this beautiful word, rock. The Greek word for that is Petra. You know, in Greek, once again, a teaching moment. In Greek, there is a masculine, feminine noun, neuter noun that is given to even things. For example, kingdom of God, Vasileya, feminine. Aletia, truth, is feminine. Petra is feminine. Now why do we say that this is important? Because what we have forgotten is this. The moment we take Peter, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. We place all the authority on that one word and one person. And we absolutize authority in such a way. We forget to ask the question. Is that authority used to give power, to give life? Does that power enable life, enrich life? Because that is the criteria of power that Jesus showed, that Jesus used throughout his ministry. Jesus' power and authority was used only to bring life enhance life and for us to understand that our confession of Jesus as the Christ, as the Messiah, as our Lord and God means that we live in Christ, that we live and walk by what Jesus taught us. And that is where I would like us to remember the sermon today. 
with an acronym, ROCK. The R standing for return, repent, reconcile. And that reconciliation, that repentance and realization, let us not think too much of ourselves what we read in the second lesson in Romans chapter 12 verses 1 to 8. Remember that God has given us, each of us, gifts of grace. Charismata. Gifts of grace according to God's own power, God's own calling. What we need to recognize, realize is this. That the gift of prophesying is as important as the gift of being compassionate. Turn to the second reading in your bulletins and look at that. Different varieties of gifts given by the same God. For us to be compassionate, to share our love, to share our faith is also a calling, is also a gift. And we are called by God in Christ to grow in that gift. The second reading today, when Paul talks about that image of the body, you are all one in Christ. The O I would like us to remember as oneness. Our oneness in Christ, even if we realize, even if as human beings, we would like to differentiate the value of different gifts, for us to remember that God has given gifts to all. And that core truth is this. Those gifts vary. And for, all, for us to recognize that these gifts are meant to come together. Come together to glorify God's name. It was Francis of Assisi who said this beautiful quote. Preach the gospel at all times. Use words if necessary. Preach the gospel at all times. Use words if necessary. Meaning, your whole life has to be a gospel preached. Then another say, be the Bible that people read, especially those who have never read the Bible, for them to read, to see your life and read in your life the Bible. How difficult it is to live every day as the child of God and to walk in God's ways. God will give us strength. So we repent, return, realize, rejoice. Celebrate our oneness in Christ and offer ourselves as living sacrifice. The C stands for the church, the covenant, the community. The covenant God made with us from the beginning will never be broken. We were reminded of that covenant last week when Roman was baptized. In our baptisms as we are sealed with that sign of the cross for us to remember and celebrate each time we come up for communion that we are children of God called to be a community. Be there for one another. Because it is only when we live together as a community and share that we become the church. We are the church. The church is not a structure, a building, a steeple. We are the church. 
and for us to be that body of Christ. Be there for one another is so important. The K, I have said earlier in my sermons, that the kingdom of God, you take away the G in it, becomes the kingdom. We are called to be the family. Kingdom, celebrate our kindred. Celebrate that kindness that Paul writes about to say, yes, being compassionate is also a gift from God. May the Spirit enrich our hearts, fill our hearts with that new learning so that we reflect this love of God in Christ every day in our lives. Preach the gospel every day. Use words if necessary. Amen.
Let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of Sarah and Abraham, inspire your church to pursue righteousness in its ministry. Equip us to share your compassion that unites us as one family for faith. Hear us, O oh God. Remind us that from the beginning of creation, you knit together a world meant for harmony. Protect and restore the wasted places to joy and gladness. Hear us, O oh God. Stir the leaders of nations and towns, militaries and courts to respond to your teachings. Let your call for justice reach all people and bring deliverance where there is oppression. Hear us, O oh God. Show your steadfast love and faithfulness to those in despair. Increase their strength, care for all who feel low, keep safe any in the midst of trouble, and protect the vulnerable people from harm. Hear us, O oh God. Encourage those who offer their gifts and talents in service to your church. Energize this congregation's roster and lay leaders, musicians, teachers, greeters, and administrators, so they may be transformed in sharing your grace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. At this time, let us specially pray for all those on our prayer list, especially those who are going to have surgeries this week. We name them aloud or silently remember them in our hearts.
Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving for what you have first given us, for ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. We receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. <laughs> Go in peace, serve the Lord, and peace be to God.